One of the main reasons people lose fish is because they have incorrectly rigged up the spear to the spear gun. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to rig up a single wrap, a double wrap, a breakaway rig for really, really big fish, as well as a real gun correctly, and how to do it properly with a real set of swages instead of just the back of pliers, because that's never gonna end well if you shoot something big. So when it comes to attaching the line at the front of your gun, a lot of people want to use a bungee like this with say, a pigtail clip or a snap clip. For me personally, if I'm chasing big fish, I won't use a snap clip because I've pulled these things straight many a time. I remembered why I stopped using snap clips a long time ago. One guess what did that? Big halibut, double shot on kingfish, pulled them straight, I just don't trust them. Pigtails on the other hand, a much stronger clip and they're actually faster to get undone when you adjust them correctly. The biggest problem I have with these is they have a bit of spectra in the middle, which is great because you don't want it to be relying solely on the rubber. But when you stretch it out, you know, it bottoms out. That's fine, that's all well and good. When a fish is pulling on the end, if it's running you through the reef, and then you happen to hit a very sharp piece of rock and say it's elongated like this, you get a small lick in it. Your muzzle bungee will fail. And then it's open like this. Now you've got an extra foot of line sitting on the end of your gun. Now how do you rig up your gun? You have to tie this in a knot and it kind of just ruins your day. For me, it's not worth it. Some people love them, but for me personally, I don't use them unless I'm rigging up a breakaway, which I'll show you shortly. So the most basic method of rigging a spear gun is exactly how you see this one. It comes from the back of the spear, up, out the end of the muzzle, down to the line release here, which releases when you pull the trigger, and back up to a clip on the front. The monofilament and your spear always goes under the band like this. The monofilament follows the spear. That's all you have to remember. Now, you can see on the top of this gun here that the line guide is on the left-hand side. So I like to have the monofilament running down the left-hand side, and I'll show you that now. So when we put it through the spear, I like to have it crimped here like this so that it runs down the left-hand side of the spear, not the other way, so it crosses over the spear when you're rigging it up. That's just a bit of a pedantic thing, but I like to do it. Next, we take a crimp. This is a crimp or a barrel swage, whatever you want to call it. I use copper ones, I don't use aluminium ones. This is 1.8 millimeter monofilament, so I use a 2.1 millimeter crimp. Very simple, slide the crimp on to the monofilament. Then you slide it into the hole like this. Now, it's tempting to make a massive loop like this, I like to make the loops quite small, as small as I can get away with. The easiest way to line this up and make it very easy for crimping is to burn the end of the mono like this with a lighter, then mushroom it over slightly like that. This does two things. If you haven't crimped properly, it'll stop the monofilament pulling through a little bit. It may not work on a massive fish, but it makes me feel a little bit better. But it also makes it really easy to adjust this loop because you're never gonna have the monofilament pull back inside. So it's always going to be the full length of the barrel. And I think that's a much better way of crimping. So I've got it adjusted to where I want it. Now for the crimping part. Never ever use the back of pliers or try and use the pinchy part of the set of vice grips. It's never going to work. You need to use a proper swaging tool with rounded jaws like this. Now for the crimping, I like to crimp about a millimeter from the end so it doesn't pinch the monofilament. And it's really simple to do. So you just grab it like this, get your crimper in there, squeeze down firmly. You have one section of the barrel done. Then you move over to the next section on the other end, crimp it down, and there'll be one more bulge in the middle. Simply crimp that out. And that's your crimp or swage done perfectly with a little bit of a flare on either end. Now that we have it affixed to the spear, we come out the muzzle, under the line guide, and over the top of the spear. Now you wanna keep a little bit of attention on this monofilament because it does have a little bit of stretch in it. And then you come back down to the line release and then up to where you attach it on the gun. Now I like to swage it about 10 millimeters before the clip because when it pulls tight, the loop actually stretches out a little bit because of the way the loop goes. So I go about a centimeter before, simply repeat the same process, attach to your clip like this. Pigtail clips are really easy, that's why I like them. And now, when you come to rig this up, I don't go down the line guide at the front straight away. You just pull it down to the line release, and then you've got slack in the line. Goes there, and all you do, flick it back over the muzzle, like so. You have the perfect tension, 
on your shooting line. No need for muzzle bungees in my opinion. And that is how you rig the most basic form of a spear gun with a single wrap. The next method is called a double wrap, and as the name implies, it has two wraps of line. Funny that. As usual, it starts at the back of the spear, under the rubbers of course, out the muzzle, down the line guide, to the line release, and back up to the line anchor on the front of the gun. And you go around that, under the clip, back down to the line release, and then you attach, as per the single wrap, at the front with a crimp, a little bit of a gap, that's your double wrap. I probably wouldn't use this on anything like this gun. I would use it with something with two rubbers, chasing long range shots like Dentex or something that's requiring a lot of power with a 3 8 inch spear, dog tooth tuner, bluefin tuner, marlin or any sizable fish like that where you need a bit of extra range. But for me personally, I try and stick to single wraps as much as I can because I don't like giving fish a head start getting to the reef, particularly if you're shooting large things like green job fish, they'll just bury you straight in the reef and you're more than likely going to lose the fish and your spear. Oh, I just lost the whole spear and everything. Now for the third method called a breakaway, and as the name implies, the shaft breaks away from the rest of the gun and is completely independent once shot. Now, you would only really use this on a double wrap. So it begins the same as always, line attached to the shaft, out the muzzle, down to the line release, back up to the line guide. You don't actually need the clip on the front of this gun when you do this method, but it's just there because I don't want to cut it off. Then back down to the line release. So that's your double wrap going to here, but now you go one more time, back down to the line release. Now, this is where a bungee comes in handy. So what you would do is you hook your bungee onto there, onto the line release like so, then make your loop about, I'd say an inch away from the edge of the bungee because you're going to attach these two together. Crimp this off very quickly. Simply attach the bungee by looping it back on itself onto the loop like so, and then over the line release. This is your finished breakaway system. And now you attach your float line to this little loop here because it's the strongest part. You don't want to be going through this bungee. And also when your breakaway float line attaches here, it doesn't tend to pull it off the line release as much as if you have a clip down here because you'll often find that it'll pull off the line release when you're diving and it's really annoying because then you've got a dog tooth tuner in front of you, then you're rigging sitting everywhere. And then you come to the surface screaming, allegedly. When you pull the trigger, it's completely separate from the rest of your gun, this your gun like this, that's attached to a massive dog tooth tuna screaming off down the reef. You've now got your very expensive double roller or whatever you're using, it's in your hands. You can use it to poke off sharks as well, which is really handy because when you shoot dog tooth tuna, guaranteed you're gonna find some sharks as well. The fourth and final method is the real gun. Now, these are very popular in Europe, but the thing you have to do with one of these is have a line guide on the front so that the line always pulls straight out of the reel like this. I've seen some guys dive without this line guide here and the line will come out of the bottom of the reel like this and you really risk tangling it up on the handle or something like that if you've shot a big fish. It's very important to have a line guide so the line rolls straight out of the reel. That's the biggest thing that has to happen when you rig up a reel gun. Now. Imagine that this reel gun is rigged up exactly the same as a single wrap. The line comes out the front of the line guide and imagine this is your clip. Instead of a clip, I use a bowline knot for two reasons. One, because when you have your reel out on the bottom and there's a fish on the end, the metallic clip tends to sink and get caught on the reef or kelp or anything that you're in like that. And two, it makes a lot more noise. So I just don't use one. I find it very unnecessary. The actual rigging is basically the same as a single wrap, attaches to the spear at the back here, comes over the front of the muzzle, down to the line release, and then back up to the front. The great thing with the reel is you can adjust this tension here at the front. So you can basically clip your monofilament wherever you want here. You can clip it about 
50 mil from the end of the line guide. That's what I do to allow for play. So that's the real gun setup with a single wrap. It goes from the back, out the muzzle, down to the line release, connects onto the line guide where the real line comes out the front. You can do a double wrap with this as well. And instead of going straight to the real line, you go up to the line guide, back down to the line release, and then to the real line, just like the double wrap that we showed you before. So there you have it guys, the four most common methods of rigging up a spear gun, single wrap, double wrap, breakaway, and a real gun. Each of these things have their own different use throughout the spearfishing world. It's a bit like golf. You don't just use a putter to try and drive it down a range. You probably could, not ideal, but there's something better suited to it. For instance, if you're trying to shoot a massive dog tooth tuna, don't use a little 90 centimeter pea shooter with a single wrap and a small spear. Use a massive gun with a lot of power and a breakaway rig. It's gonna give you the best chance of success. Not that you can't do it with a 90, but it's better to do it with the big gun. That's all I got for you on this video, guys. If you liked it or got something out of it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next one.